What's up everyone, this is Trendkill Toys, back with another video. And this time I'm taking a look at the Jada Toys Chun-Li figure from Street Fighter 2. Before I get into the figure, here's the packaging, which is interesting. It's pretty cool that they went with the arcade machine style. And then you got uh, the insert in the background, you can take that out and use that for pictures if you want. You got a picture of Chun-Li here, which is I think the original art for Street Fighter 2. The other figures in the wave. And then they show the rest of the roster from the game. Now, I'm not going to get that many characters, but... So, of course, Akuma. He's one of my favorites. And Bison, another one of my favorites. Uh, maybe Sagat, depending on how that turns out. Uh, Kami, probably. Uh, and then Ken. And that's it. Those are my favorite characters. All the accessories that are included with the figure you see here does come with her uh, kicking effect. I'm not really sure what the move is called. And then a stand for that effect. And then she does not come with a stand for her. This is from uh, DC Multiverse. This is a McFarlane toy stand. And I think I did, yeah, I put a little bit of tack on the peg so that the figure would fit properly. And she does come with an alternate head sculpt, which is not too bad. This is the head that was originally on the figure before I switched it. Two hands, a chopping hand, and then a fist. Another fist and a chopping hand. So two fists, two chopping hands. Pretty much all you need. I would have liked to see maybe two more sets of hands. Uh, maybe a third head sculpt too. The head sculpt where she has her eyes closed and she's smiling when she's doing her victory pose and also a you know a peace sign hand that would have rounded out the entire figure in my opinion but at $24.99 you know this isn't too bad but i think most of the worth and price is going into the actual figure itself the design of the figure is very good the way that they engineered this figure uh really surprising how good it is especially for the price but i do have some uh problems with it for example some of the paint applications are a bit sloppy uh, here, you know, yellow is notoriously very hard to paint, and especially on a color like blue, that uh, some problems can come from that, as you can see right here. You can see the blue poking through the yellow right there, and then again right there. And then it's just overall, the yellow paint is not that clean on the shoulders. It is a lot more cleaner on the front of the figure and on the back of the figure as well. She also has her hair bun coverings here, and you can see the yellow on that, which is not the cleanest, again, application, but nice that they added it there uh, and I think the yellow I think the yellow color they chose is okay but I think it's really more of a gold or bronze color especially when you compare it to the art but if you see the the color of the yellow right here it's not really yellow it's more of a bronze so this yellow is like really yellow it's almost like this like the joystick right there uh, but this is more of a goldish bronzish kind of color more brown in there so it's a shame they didn't go with that color but it is good you know for what it is for what they did it does come across as chun li and the paint does get a little bit sloppy coming down here on the trim of the dress uh, the designs came out pretty good but there's some sloppiness up here especially and then down the legs are just you know smooth it's cast in this brownish plastic which is not too bad and then the boots down here are pretty nicely done this is kind of another uh, complaint that I have against it though. As you can see, the, the bottom of the shoe or the foot here is actually painted in white. And then the top of the boot, the rest of the boot, is cast in white. The difference in color might not show up on camera, but it's definitely noticeable in person. Especially if you're used to seeing painted plastic versus sculpted plastic. When it's sculpted in a particular color versus when the plastic is painted in that same color. There's definitely a difference and it is noticeable, at least to me. Might not come across on camera. Uh, let me know if you pick up on that though. So it is different and of course the painted part looks better than the sculpted part. So it's kind of a shame they didn't just sculpt the entire thing or paint the entire thing. In general, I think it does look fine. One more complaint I want to mention briefly and this does involve the bottom of her dress. There was almost little to no glue holding the dress down. And I was lifting it up to see how far I can get the legs to move forward. And it came apart. So it was pegged into there and there was a tiny bit of glue and it wasn't very strong glue either. And the same thing happened with her back. So same story, you know, tiny bit of glue, not even good quality glue. So that's sort of a trend that I've been noticing with figures recently is that the quality of glue is just not that great. And so I could go back and glue that and it would be fine. But I just wanted to keep it that way to show you uh, just something to be aware of. And then her wrist. Her spiky wristbands are fairly nice. Of course, it's not going to be that sharp. Then one last thing before we get into the articulation. There is a smudge on her cheek right there. 
and there's a bit of brown paint on the top of the forehead right there. This one also has a mark right there on the bottom of her chin, but it's not too bad and the paint on the face is pretty good for the most part. One last thing I want to mention, and I'm going to bring this reference photo back in. Uh, the sculpt is not the same. Like, just straight up, the it does not look like this art or, you know, the in-game sprite. It's sort of their own version of Chun-Li. It just doesn't look the same. But it's not bad. It, it's still, like, when you look at it, you know, you know it's Chun-Li. Now I'll take a look at the articulation. So you get a swivel at the head and a hinge downward. Now this is really stupid. This is really stupid, okay? It's not a dumbbell joint. Like it's not uh, it's not a neck piece and then dumbbell joint from the neck to the head and then another dumbbell joint going from the bottom of the neck into the body. It's not a dumbbell joint, which is what they've done with the Ryu and the Fei Long. Why didn't they do that with the Chun-Li? It's kind of a stupid decision in my opinion. So it's this neck piece, and there's a ball joint at the bottom here, I believe. It might not even be a ball joint. I think it's just a straight peg that goes down there. And then it, there's a hinge right there, so it hinges forward. Not very much. Doesn't hinge very much back either. Sort of stopped by the collar right there. And then this ball joint on top doesn't even move at all. And you don't get as much range as you would if it was just a traditional dumbbell joint. She does look up enough and look down enough, a decent amount. But there's no little to no tilt and some people might some people might think like well you don't really need tilt but it makes the figure that much more better when you actually have a properly working dumbbell joint for the neck and they didn't and that's just not the case for this figure so super unfortunate again i think it's a stupid decision they've shown that they can do it and they, for some reason they just didn't do it shoulders go up that far of course the shoulders of the dress are puffy so it's going to limit articulation going up swivel them around it's not on a butterfly joint so you're not going to get any range more than that she can't really bring her arms forward she can she can bring her arms forward a little bit butterfly joint would have been cool if they had it and there's a hidden bicep swivel so that's nice i appreciate that double elbows work very good and the bracelets are a separate piece so you can move them around you can even take them off and the hand just hinges up and down and then it swivels so pretty standard hand articulation and then the upper torso joint, I believe, is a dumbbell joint. Uh, it doesn't get that far by itself. It gets about that much. And then back, not a whole lot. The bottom one is where you're going to get most of that range. Moving forward, goes that far. And again, just the bottom joint. Going back a little bit. And then both combined, you're able to go back that far. And then go far, that far forward. Which is really good. And then of course you can lean side to side, which again is really good that they were able to engineer it that way. And of course you can twist it. I really like how that turned out. Now we get into the legs. They go out that far. And this is really good engineering of the legs. There's no drop down hips. You don't really need it if you can engineer it properly, which they did. And you can raise the legs up that far, which is important for a martial artist character. And then this piece under here is soft and rubbery. So it does flex to raise the leg up so you can get better poses with the legs so I appreciate that thigh swivel is good double knees were a little tight out of the box but after you know moving them a few times they do get good range then boot swivel and then ankles are staged or ratcheted I don't like ratcheted joints but it's kind of the norm uh, these days and it does swivel on that joint uh, for $24.99 I think they could have done a little bit better on the accessories. Uh, for example, this accessory is not that great. Like it doesn't really fit on her foot that well. Also no effects uh, for her, you know, swimming bird move or whatever it's called. Is that what it's called? I probably have an effect that would fit that. Would have been nice if they included it though. I think it's a good figure, especially compared to some of the other lines that are out there. Like, of course, this is way better than Marvel Legends. So here's a basic Marvel Legends figure. We'll get into comparison and head swaps as well. Here's a recent Spider-Woman figure that came out in the West Coast Avengers 5-pack. And I did swap the hair out for a more accurate look to the Iron Man animated series. Like comparing this figure to this one. Yeah, Marvel Legends is really bad in comparison to Jada toys. I mean, the range, the leg range is not that far off. But especially when it comes to the torso, 
like this barely moves forward and then it moves a little bit more back but you're not going to get this much range or especially leaning left to right you get some but Marvel Legends refused to do any lower torso articulation for the male figures and much less for the female figures it's going to be a while until they get that down uh, really good there was that Black Widow figure but you know they tried with that new Black Widow figure Target exclusive but they pretty much dropped the ball on that one and obviously in terms of accessories you know the Chun-Li figure does come with an alternate head and an effect piece the Marvel Legends let alone female Marvel Legends barely come with anything they only come with like two hands and that's it no effects no alternate heads rarely do you see that with a female figure uh, and then while this figures out we'll just do a quick size comparison so it is you know pretty close chun -Li is slightly shorter which does make sense she is chinese after all and then you can't really do head swaps with marvel legends because the ball peg is way too big and you, you can't do it the other way around though so you can't put marvel legends heads on the jada toys and so that gives you an idea of what that looks like if you want to do a custom or something i don't know and i'll show you what it looks like next to some of my custom female figures from a few different fighting games here she is next to my custom morgan from darkstalkers so this is a custom that i made i painted the head sculpt it's not too bad it could be fixed here and there uh and she's a lot taller than chun li but you know it's really cool having these two figures in my collection now also have a custom my shiranui from king of fighters i know this figure is not that great but honestly it's not that bad in my opinion but for me it works out all right so that's what those two figures look like together. Then here's my custom Felicia from Darkstalkers. This one's probably my favorite custom. I know I took some liberties with the costume, but but this works for me. And honestly, I prefer this design better. And here she is next to Fig Arts Vegeta. This figure is really awesome. This Vegeta is really awesome. Here's another Chinese character. And here's Ada Wong from Resident Evil. This is a custom of mine. And here's what the Chun-Li head looks like on the TB League body. Doesn't look that good, honestly. It's too big. Or here's what the Ada Wong head looks like on the Chun-Li body. And if you just put a little bit of tack in there to hold it up, it'll look pretty good. But here she is next to Leon. You know, Ada and Leon. And then if you have any female body with the neck peg cut off, you can do head swaps with this figure as well. Here she is on a Voliverse body. The neck might be a little bit too high. And the last size comparison, here's the SH Figure Arts Sakura, which is the best Street Fighter Figure Arts. Last but not least, here she is next to He-Man. And of course, he's in a 7-inch scale, so he's going to be a lot taller. But just so you know, that's what that looks like. Anyways, guys, so I'm pretty happy with this figure. You know, there are a few complaints that I have with it. Definitely looking forward to the other figures coming out, especially like Ken and Bison and Akuma. I think those figures are going to be really sick when they come out. Yeah, that's all I got to say about this figure, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think, and I'll see you in the next one.